Hello, everyone, and welcome to Home Plate Middleby Residential Virtual Experience. We're so glad you're here today, and today's training will be on biking induction. I'm Margaret McSweeney, your moderator, and just a few housekeeping items before we record and uh, move forward. One, uh, we'll just have to make sure everyone is muted so we can hear the great presentations today. And also, if you could please write any questions you have in the chat room. Sue Bailey will be answering those directly and you will get those answered. And then at the very end of the presentation, we will ask for any additional questions and for you to raise your hand and you can go to the chat room and press uh, raise your hand and we'll make sure we try to get those questions answered for you. But welcome. I'd first of all like to introduce to you today's players and presenters. The first is Chef Jamie Larita. He is Biking Brand Ambassador, Chicago Showroom and Creative Director for Middleby Residential. We also have Chef Jackie Rothong, who is a Viking Ambassador and is in the New York City Showroom, along with Maria Gomez Lazardo, who is a district sales manager for Middleby Residential, and also Sue Bailey, who is the director of Go To Market um, Strategies for Viking. So, thank you so much to our participants. And Jamie, if you could begin, please. Well, first of all, I'd like to say welcome everyone back into our Viking showroom here in the Merchandise Mart. I have to say that I'm really, really excited about Home Plate and bringing you all kinds of entertaining ways to learn about all of our amazing appliances and uh, here in our showroom. But first, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about induction. And this is what today is all about. Hopefully you guys can learn something today and also take this with you as you are selling and inspiring and influencing others to uh, uh, be part of the uh, sales experience. So. When I was a young chef, which was now going back many years ago, I trained in Europe. So in Europe, I was cooking on a lot of induction product there, and I wasn't really seeing a lot of it in America. So some of you know, but not all of you know, that I traveled the world with some of the most incredible rock stars and entertainers. Everybody from Sarah McLaughlin, Josh Groban, and Barry Manilow to the big heavy rockers like Aerosmith, and KISS and everybody in between. Now, doing that, I had to bring equipment with me on the road or use others' equipment. In Italy, for example, there was a lot of induction. We're going back 15 years ago. I didn't see a lot of it in America, but today it is pretty much very prevalent in all of the big hotels and restaurant chains and also all over residential. So, it's really cool to see how the Europeans have used it. And now here in America, it's becoming more popular. I love being in the showroom when people come in looking for electric, not knowing anything about induction. I love then explaining my experiences. And today I'll be doing that with Chef Jackie as well on how to cook on induction. So I want to share a really quick recipe that's very timely today with all of this, you know, cold and flu season going around but also the obvious uh, COVID that's going around. And if you know somebody that's experiencing that or even some basic cold symptoms, this recipe is something that I share with you today. It's a great gift to give someone, something to keep uh, in your house. It makes a great you know, cup of tea. It, you can also add a tea bag to it, maybe a Pearl Grey or, or your favorite tea while it's hot and infuse this recipe into that as well. What's great about this recipe is that it keeps the juices flowing. Your main ingredient, really, the base is water. So essentially you're just creating a broth with the lemon, but you're using the entire lemon. So you're gonna grate the skin off of the lemon and zest it. You can use a zester or you can use a grater just like this, but you wanna remove all of that zest first. But don't throw away the lemon, cut it in half, juice it really, really well. And if you have one of these where you can discard the pits, fantastic, the seeds. And then you wanna retain all that lemon juice. So this is about 
14 cups of water, 14 to 16 cups of water, depending on how you like it. And then you have it simmering, which is so great. And we'll show you on our induction how we're doing that. You simmer that, um, you simmer the actual, the entire pith of the, of the lemon, the whole, the whole rind, if you will, is simmering on your, on your uh, induction cooktop or on top of your range. To that, you're gonna create a sachet. Now today, I'm getting innovative, and that's the one thing, the word innovation, is what we use all the time here in Middleby Residential because of the Middleby Corporation. We're able to use so much innovation into our product. So I'm being innovative today because I don't have cheesecloth and I'm using a brand new gym sock. See that? I've already grated some ginger right here by using the same exact device, grater. I've grated a, 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 an arm, I call it an antler of ginger. So the ingredients simply are lemons, ginger, honey, chili flake, and a whole lot of good energy. And speaking of energy, we're gonna go in a few minutes and talk just about energy with Sue Bailey after I get done with this recipe. But first, I wanna put the ingredients into the sock. So I've got my ginger and lemon zest. And I'm using about four small lemons, three large lemons if you've got it. And you create a sachet just like that. Now you could use cheesecloth, you could use a dish cloth, anything that's clean because you're going to be cooking it and simmering it on your cooktop. Now before I do that, I take the, um, the lemon juice, which is about a cup at the end of the day, and I give this lemon zest and ginger a good squeeze. Woo, it's juicy. Ginger is real, don't be, you know, if you see something that looks dry, like this looks pretty dry, you'd be shocked at how juicy it actually is. And I get that juice really juiced out and squoezed into that lemon juice. Is that, if that's a word, squoezed, I just made it up. Maybe you've heard it before, maybe you've used it. But now I have my juice. So the first thing I do is get my water going and we're gonna go over there to our induction cooktop. And right now on one of my back burners, I actually have some lemons going. And you can see that I've got this now on medium high, and I'm gonna bring that up to a boil. You'd be shocked how fast induction works. How, I explain it guys like having the ability to have your foot on the pedal of a race car. When you cook with induction, you have a lot of control. And Sue Bailey is gonna talk soon about what induction actually is and some of the, some of the steps about where we're going with this uh, program. So first, I'm gonna show you from a, a cold start how fast induction actually works. So this is cold water, and I can guarantee you that in less than, I would say, two minutes, I could already see the heat waves on the bottom of the pan, guys. I could see the energy starting to flow. So when you talk about induction, induction is the relationship between the magnet and the pan. So the pan is what's really, it's not really the element per se, it's the metal, it's the pan, it's the relationship between the two. And as you can see from a cold start, I already have energy communicating with the pan to give you the end result, which is boiling water. Before we get started with Sue, I wanna show you what I love about induction and cooking on induction mostly is about how you can take your kitchen towel, a regular kitchen towel, and literally if you're doing something like tomato sauce or you're doing something like frying, which of course creates a little bit of a mess. And if you're like me in the kitchen, in my kitchen, you will never see a mess because I'm always cleaning up after myself. You can see guys, we've got full speed ahead right here. Look at that rolling boil. Imagine having pasta. That was less than two minutes. Now you can throw in your pasta. So you can already understand energy. How long would it take on a normal range to get a, a pot of boiling water to get that rolling that fast? So what I love to do is I love to put a kitchen towel right underneath my product, my pan, 
And guess what happens? It still works. So say this was oil, or say this was something that was gonna be splashy or messy, I still, and this is pretty thick, this is two, two layers right here that I've got you know, through this towel. So I'm still able to perform my cooking procedure through that energy. So when it comes to energy, there's nobody better in Viking than Sue Bailey, who knows, I mean, she's my go-to, I have to say, that Sue Bailey really has been an employee of Viking for so long. So Sue Bailey, let's take it away and tell our guests about what induction really is. Good, hey, I hope everybody's doing well. And Jamie, squozed is a word, just so you know. I just want you to know that squozed is a word. Thank you, so. Sue. You're welcome. So Jamie did an excellent job of introducing you guys to induction. You guys that have known me for a while know how much I love induction. And most of that is because you guys that know me know I can cook and choose not to because I don't like to spend my time doing that. But like Jamie said, this is the quickest way to actually cook food. I'm going to give you the definition of induction, knowing that it's kind of like microwave. You don't necessarily care how it works. You just care that it works. But the definition is that these induction elements, they generate a high frequency alternating current and a magnetic field to heat the pan. Now, what does that mean? That means exactly what Jamie told you guys. It heats up fast. And you saw it with the pan of water that we have right here. Jamie, if you'll turn that pan back on high for me, I would love that. You got Please. it. So when we take it to high, you guys saw how quickly it boils, but let's put it in relationship to a five series range we have. So a five series range will take um, one quart of water and bring it to a boil in about five minutes and 15 seconds. As Jamie said, this one will bring it to a boil in a little over two minutes. So guys, you are speeding it up. You have spent half the amount of time bringing that water to a boil. But what's so very important about it is as Jamie turns it down to simmer, notice how quickly it reacts. This is what people love about induction. It is as close to gas as you can get because of that wonderful control that you see right there. And if once I put the pasta in, I need to turn it back up to get it to a rolling boil faster, then immediately, Jamie can, can comment to what's the worst thing to do with pasta is to not bring it back up to a rolling boil. Is that right, Jamie? It sure is, Sue. And if you are cooking pasta at home and you know anyone that is a pasta lover like myself, a rolling boil is the only way to cook pasta, please. Exactly, exactly. So guys, there really are five benefits to induction, which I should have given you to start with. It's speed, which we've talked about. This is the control. There's energy efficiency, safety, and cleaning. We're gonna cover all of those as, as we go through today. The speed is my thing. You guys know I talk fast. I like to get everything done in a hurry. The thing to remember though, even though it brings the water to a boil faster, Jamie, I still have to boil the pasta for the same amount of time that the recipe calls for, correct? That is correct. But Sue, I have to tell you to that point, which is very interesting, the pasta actually cooks faster, and I put that to the test. That is a true statement. Excellent. So just like on the bag, it may say six to eight minutes. It's really less because you don't really truly get a rolling boil. Now, one thing, Sue, uh, to interject, I love to tell customers that when you think of a pan, when you think of a pot on an induction cooktop, and you think of that ring of fire, that ring of fire when you're using gas is your hot point where the, where the tips of the flame hit the metal. On induction, your entire surface of the pan yep. is your flame. That's okay. why it's faster. I love the way when I'm cooking on it, and we'll touch about that on the Jackie, that you'll get a perfectly beautiful even sear when you're doing something like scallops in an induction pan. Exactly. And one of the things that's so great about the um, induction cooktop, especially the one that you're looking at, Jamie, all of those elements are exactly the same. They're all nine inch elements. They will all go up to 3,700 watts. Let's talk about power sharing for just a minute, Jamie, as you're going to help me with that. So if we're looking at this piece, any and all of those elements can be a power burner. All right. Knowing they're all 2,300 watts, when I turn it to high, and it moves to 3,700 watts, what that means is I am sharing power from that back element 
to bring that front element up to 3,700 watts, okay? So then what happens is if you want to use the back element, you absolutely can, but it only has 900 watts that it can use until we take this one off of the power boil. So perfect, Jamie, we can simmer right back there while this one is boiling. Now the thing to know about the power burner or when you have it on the power level is that it will only stay on that level at high using 3,700 watts for 10 minutes, guys, because there is not a pan, no matter how big or how much water you have in there, that will not come to a rolling boil within 10 minutes. So if for some reason you forget to turn it off of high, which I promise you, Jamie, that, that won't happen, right? They'll know it's on high. It will automatically go down to the 2,300 watts that it has. If Jamie wanted that back burner to be at 3,700 watts, he can turn that on high first. It pulls power from the front, okay? So uh -huh. you, can, you can have three burners on at the same time, all on high, but they have to be either front or back of the other. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Good. And on the um, Virtuoso cooktop, which is my favorite, right next to um, Jamie, you still will power share with, with two of them. So the big one will power share with the smaller one behind it and those good things. So we still get the power share with that. Any questions about power share? Jamie, I'm going to throw it back to you. So Sue, when it comes to just a quick question, I mean, yeah. let's, let's talk about the aesthetic of the uh, of this piece of equipment. Uh -huh. I love that this is a different look. First of all, you've got those Viking SBLs, and those of you that don't know what the SBLs is by now, it's that sexy blue lighting that you see right here. So this also comes in a smaller unit, correct? It's a four, a four burner as well. That's exactly right, and we are one of the few manufacturers that have a 36 six burner. The Virtuoso 36 is a five burner. So this is one of the, the few that have that, but the 30 inch is a four burner. You're correct on that, Jamie. Okay, so really, Sue, when it comes to like the market and knowing I've cooked on everything from a campfire to, you know, to inside, believe it, a firehouse, I've seen a lot of the different induction. Now, when I talked about brewers back to my past, I was talking about those big clunky um, induction pieces that were of the past. This right. is so streamlined, and I love the color of the, as a designer, you know, when I first saw this, I have to say I was a little, um, first of all, I have to tell you guys this. I was the guy who traveled on the road that required gas from everywhere I went. I actually had it on my lighter that I needed to cook on gas. Then there were the moments where they would actually offer induction, and I used to say no because I was intimidated by it. I didn't know what it was. Now that I know what it is and I've been cooking on it, I prefer to cook on induction. So when I first saw this, to my point, I was so impressed with the look and the color of the glass. And if we can just touch on that Schlock Saran glass surface, it's where the customers really resonate towards the color and the glass of this. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit, if I could, just quickly about the durability of this soup. Oh, absolutely. And that piece, you have to remember, is an exclusive transmetallic ceramic surface we get from SHOT. It is a very expensive um, surface, but we love the pattern of it. We love the way the blue comes through it. But it is also absolutely, like you said, durable. Dropping a pan on it or the cast iron skillets, it's not going to harm it. And the thing I love, too, is it just gives it such a great look. The challenge with induction, which somebody else might talk about later, is you can't actually see the element, right? It doesn't turn red like it does on an electric. It doesn't um, show flame like it does on a gas, but this is so easy to clean and will stay looking that beautiful forever because and you're not you're actually right putting through it. You're yeah. right. You're so right. I've had this in the showroom for three years cooking on it and it looks brand new. It's, it's exactly the way it looked when it first came in. Another really great point, guys, I want to show you is this little indicator right here. This little white indicator light shows you, this is off now, but it shows you that it was actually on. Even when I take the pan off of it, it will still continue to blink to show the consumer that this was once hot. So I'm going to have a, uh, one more question for you soon, and then we're going to throw it 
um, to Maria to talk a little bit about the sales aspect of this. But Sue, when it comes to uh, an empty pan, that mm -hmm. or um, when, when, when a customer wants to know how, how does this work when you, know, you turn it on, is there an, an automatic shut off anywhere in this product that lets you know? The there, there is, which is great because you know, as, especially with induction, especially when you're simmering something, you might not really realize that that burner is on, right? Or if you're like me, you get called away from where it is, right? So Jamie, if you put that back on the element that it was on, and you turn that element on so that it makes connection. And here's how you'll know too, guys, I'm gonna throw this in here. See how that light became solid just then? That means that that pan has made a connection with the element. If that pan was not induction friendly, that light would just con continue to blink, if that makes sense, what I'm saying there. So we know we've got a good connection. So if Jamie decides to move that pan off of that element, and let's say he does not turn the knob off. So he's just going to move it off. He's got a phone call. Someone's come into the showroom, whatever might happen. And he doesn't turn that knob off. What will happen in about 60 seconds is that will disable that element. So if somebody else, let's say a small child comes by and it's been two minutes and he slides the pan back on, it will not make a connection. It will have disabled itself, which is, I think, what you were asking me about. Right, Jamie? It sure was. Yeah. But Sue, you, you are so informative, and thank you so much for clarifying some of those points. Whenever I have a question about, you know, learning anything that I need to know about biking or, you know, sometimes we're human, I need a refresher. I can always depend on you. Thank you so much for being. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, that. Professional that you are. We really, really love you. But I also want to talk a little bit about, you know, the sales aspect of this. I want you guys to understand that at the end of the day, this is what we do. We're influencers, we inspire people, and we design, right? So that's what I love about our showroom is that I get to do all three of those things. But really, it's the sales force out there that really has the ability to reach out and touch to the, to the consumer through the dealer. So I want to bring Maria Lizardo into the, uh, into the mix here. And Maria, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing a little bit of your knowledge and expertise on the sales end of things, I want to hear your voice to speak to the people on board here to and educate them a little bit as to like how do you sell this thing thank you jamie um you know as a sales rep uh and as a message giver um i know that we have a very small window of opportunity to relay the message um when it comes to our product so for myself, I like to focus on things that the customer can relate to, things that are relatable to them. Um, efficiency, clearly, um, as Sue mentioned, this type of cooking is a very, very efficient type of cooking. Um, it's 90% more efficient. And when you give a customer a relatable number, then they can understand that the speed of this product is really where it's at. Um, as Sue mentioned, because the cookware becomes your heat source, there's no heat loss. And so there is no wasted radiant heat warming your area, which means that that cooking area, when you're using all of your zones simultaneously, it's still going to remain a very cool area, unlike a gas cooktop or a gas range where a lot of that heat is cooking, is heating your surrounding area. Um, I also like to talk about um, the speed and the instant responsiveness that you can, most people know what it is to look at a piece of cookware with water and watching it boil for five minutes. It can't boil fast enough. But when you tell a customer that you can, you know, um, boil four quarts of water in two to three minutes, that's something that they can relate to. And my biggest thing is that you cannot put a price on time. It is a very big time saver. People have busy lives. They're trying to get dinner on the table quickly. And by talking about its speed and how much time it saves you, um, that to me is indispensable. One of the things that a customer will talk about is, don't you need special cookware? to cook on this product. And 
right, Jamie? I'm sure you probably get that question a lot. Absolutely, and we're going to, I'd love to hear your, um, your, your advice on that. And also we're gonna to touch a little bit with that and on that when I get to the actual cooking aspect of it. But share your, share your knowledge with the, with the people watching. What did you wanna express? So what I like to tell people is that pretty much all cooking manufacturers have product that is induction ready. Uh, most people have a, the most, you know, they have cookware out there that they know the brand names and most cooking companies understand that this induction cooking is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. As you mentioned, it's been in Europe for many, many years. And now here in the US, it is a really, you know, really popular type of cooking. So they have modified their cookware um, already. So that's how I approach it. Um, my other selling tip is the safety of this type of product. Unlike an electric cooktop that has the, the coils that heat up and as Sue said, they um, illuminate, Induction, because it works on a magnetic field, it, the surrounding area stays to the touch. And Jamie, you could probably, you know, speak to that because you can put your, your hands around the area, not necessarily directly on the burner as it's cooking, but around the surrounding area, um, it stays cool. We don't have magnetic attributes so it doesn't react to our fingers. And that to me is again, another relatable Thing that a customer can uh, understand. And that's um, great. That's easy. A, yeah, that's a Go great, ahead. Um, a great thing uh, to talk about. And um, do you have anything else to add to that? Uh, one more thing would be cleaning, the ease of cleaning. The fact that any spill over food will not stick to that surface. You put that towel, which I love, but some people will not. But if they have spillover food, it's not gonna stick to that surface. As we all know, when we're trying to clean our ranges, that is one of the challenges that we have. And finally, and um, you already spoke to it, is the beautiful design. I haven't seen a cooktop with that beautiful transmetallic ceramic uh, gray surface and the beautiful blue light that Viking has, um, and that is a beauty. Plus, we also have that virtuoso induction where when if someone wants something a little bit more modern and a little bit more clean, that induction cooktop that's next to the Pro, it is fully flushed and it leaves it, you know, such an, a beautiful installation. And those are really my three or four tips that I like to focus when speaking um, to customers. And so, thank you so um, much. Jamie. Thank you so yes, no, thank you so much for, um, I'm sorry, Maria, I didn't want to interrupt you. Did you have, did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, no, I just wanted to pass it right back to you because I want to see what else those lemons are going to do. Okay, well, I'm glad you brought the lemons up, my friend, because right now, simmering on the back burner, I've got those lemons now I can smell, the showroom smells like a potpourri of summer right now. I've got this gorgeous lemon broth happening. And as you can see, I've added my sachet with the lemon zest and ground ginger into the pot. Right now it smells so medicinal. If I had a, you know what guys, let's have a little bit of fun. Say I had a little bit of congestion. This is a perfect thing to put a towel over your head at this point and breathe in those delicious fumes as I fog up my glasses. But speaking of fun, cooking is fun. Induction cooking is fun. But I'd love to bring in my, my, my fellow chef friend, Jackie Rotham from New York City. Uh, Jackie is one of the most incredibly talented chefs that uh, I was able to fortunately bring into the mix. So I met Jackie for the first time on The Chew. Jackie did all the cooking backstage for The Chew, which was one of my favorite shows. But meeting Jackie, we have so many things in common. One of my favorite things, just to let it out there and let people know, is I, we used to have a cafe called Lorita's Cafe when I was a, a, young, a young chef 
I used to work the grill. Milby would love that. It was a commercial grill that I used to make sandwiches on. A woman used to come in almost every day, workday, and order from me. Her and I had the greatest relationship. And every day I would make her whatever sandwich it was that I would create on my grill. Um, and then one day she brought in the cutest little girl that she used to stand on the counter and the cutest little girl was like, she had the greatest dimples. And she used to stand there and I used to talk to her about cooking. As the universe would have it, let me introduce to you that little girl and Middleby Residential brand ambassador for New York, Jackie Robin. Wow, Jamie, um, that was quite the introduction. And I was hoping, you said the first time you met me was was in um, at the Chew, and I was like, wait a second, we gotta go back to when we first met when you were making me grilled cheese. Um, yeah, but I have to say my interest in cooking starts very young and a very young age, probably highly influenced clearly by Jamie. Um, but, but I have to be honest, when we met at the CHU, um, I started my career there pretty much, and I was there for seven years, and Viking was one of our sponsors. So we used and abused our induction cooktop and our electric cooktop, and we actually had induction and electric in our studio because we weren't allowed to have gas in the studio. So I come from a very unique background, a very different background, where I have ultimately like I said, used and abused these cooktops for seven years. Um, and we didn't have to really, ha I don't think we had one replaced in seven years. Now I'm talking to you, we should have been working on a commercial cooktop and we weren't. And this is actually the exact one that you're showing right now, Rich, is the exact one that um, we had in the, in the kitchen. And I would pour, I'd be frying over there where Jamie has his lemons, I would pour uh, like hot oil would get over there if I needed something in 30 seconds. I mean, it was disastrous and it never failed me. Like I, my, my boss would come in and say, Hey, I need something in 30 seconds. I need turkey gravy in 30 seconds. And I was able to make a gravy in under 30 seconds and get it out. We were a live TV show. So, um, to, to have that sort of experience and to explain to our customers that these are the capabilities, not that people are going to be diving on the floor, you know, trying to make a gravy in 30 seconds, but it just goes to show you, you can really get things done in a very fast pace. And I think most people see this and they think it's sleek and it's, it's modern and it's intimidating, right? You don't know what to do. You don't see a flame. But I think what Jamie and I and Chef Sharon, we do is we make things approachable for people. And that's our goal in the showrooms. When you're coming in, we're giving you a brand experience, but we also want to make things approachable and fun and easy and show you guys how simple it is to cook on these induction cooktops and how a lot of people come in and ask me like how how do you not cook on gas every day because in the new york city showroom we're not allowed to have gas either so it's quite comical i never get to cook on gas you don't have a lot of gas in your life jackie that's a good thing <laughs> i don't i don't it's terrible it is a good thing it is um so so yeah in the new york city showroom we also have induction and i have an auger mercury and i have uh an induction cooktop that Jamie's cooking on right now. And um, it's fantastic. And I show people all the time how I, how quickly I can fry an egg, um, how quickly and evenly I can sear a steak and how if I'm using that front boost burner, I can sear that steak and in the back, I can have like a really beautiful beer blanc going or have something like very low simmer going. So, you, you know, there's different ways you can utilize the burners. To be honest, Jamie and I were talking about, it's like, how often are you using six burners at once? Not right. often. If you want to, it's there, right? You can, you can kind of maneuver it and create it like a puzzle. But reality is, is you're really not using six burners at once. I mean, if I'm using two, that's a lot. Right. Um, so Jackie, when you, when you and the people that are online now, obviously we're two professional chefs, right? So, and we know how, important when it comes to speed and accuracy. But when you're in the showroom, for example, with me, I had a customer come back into the showroom recently after cooking on gas their entire life, this couple had to go with electric. And they came into the showroom and they were completely turned off at the idea of it. And when I introduced them to this exact piece of equipment, and I started to tell her how a gourmet chef like ourselves loves the speed and the control. 
what can we share with, and we probably already did, but is there anything else that we can share with the people that actually have to sell? We're influencers and we inspire. We're right. not the person that actually makes the connection to the sale. How do we help the person that's not a chef? Is there any tips or points that we can discuss that we can talk about, like, how does a, a, a non, let's say a non, uh, a novice cook, you know, someone that really is intimidated, intimidated by induction, what, what would be the one thing or a couple of things that you would say that you would cook on this? Normally, that would be like a game changer. Um, first off, I think one of the number one things we can tell people is that there's not a learning curve. Um, I think a lot of people come in and ask me all the time, is there a learning curve? And it's like, no, there's no learning curve. You're, you're still cooking. You're still doing the same things. You're still going through the same motions. So I think that's very important to remind people as hey, this is, this is no different. Heat is heat. Okay. Yeah. Heat is heat. Um, I mean, I think one of the main things people are cooking all the time is like a beautiful, maybe roasted chicken. And for me, like, I always like to get a really nice, beautiful sear on a, like a spatchcock chicken, which means you take the backbone out first. So you could put a really beautiful, big cast iron on there, get it really hot, really quick, sear it off, get that skin nice and crispy and throw it into your hopefully Viking French door oven and then, and then finish it in there. So you can do all of these things that you would normally do on a gas cooktop. And one of the number one things I think people ask is about searing things, searing a steak, searing certain things. And it's like that sear of anything, you have to be careful, more careful, because you've got that really high, hot heat and it's finding that like perfect temperature to get that perfect sear. Whereas one of the questions, one of the questions I get Jackie all the time here, I, when I say I, I mean we, one of the questions we get all the time and one of the big concerns are the pots and pans. How do you address that in your show when a consumer or when these guys are out there selling the product and they feel like, I always get the same line, oh, you need special pans. Yes, we get that all the time and it's quite funny. One of my main responses to that is, well, if you, if you make this purchase, you'll get a, actually a free set of pots and pans Viking that will work on your um, brand new induction cooktop. Um, but to be honest, I think most people don't realize most pots and pans work on induction, especially the ones that people are using most often, Le Creuset, Staub, um, obviously all of Viking, um, except obviously copper don't work, but all cast iron works on induction. So when you're buying a pot and pan, it usually has like the three little um, waves that show that it's induction friendly. Um, right. But if it, but Le Creuset, Staub, cast iron, they don't have that because they work on anything. So, and I don't think most people realize that. So most of the things they're using in their kitchen already work on induction. You know what I like to say, Jackie, to people that come in and have that concern, I tell them to just get like a refrigerator magnet or anything magnetic. And if it sticks to, to the it. bottom of your pan, you're good. Yeah, exactly. For me, it's like, I don't even, sometimes like I do say that to them. And then sometimes they're like, oh, I just don't want, you know, you get those customers that are like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's too much work. It's like, yeah. well, I'm like, do you have a leg crusade? Do you have a stop? Do you have this? And they're like, well, I do. And I'm like, okay, great. And then you're, you're fine. You're good. One, one of the other lines I use, and maybe the, the people out there listening, that are selling the product also, Jackie Sue, interject, is that, you know, people have to understand when they're dealing with Viking or any one of our luxury brands here in our showcase, it's about quality. So if you're buying a quality pot and pan these days and you're buying a quality appliance, chances are they're gonna be the, the, the right type of pot and pan. So, um, you're buying quality, so a good quality pot and pan these days is probably induction friendly anyway. I completely agree. So thank you so much, Jackie. I really, oh, really uh, can't wait to come and visit you in your um, New York uh, showroom. And by the way, folks, if you're uh, tuning in to us, we also have very active Instagram lives. I and Jackie, myself, are using our culinary talents to be very active on the Viking live feed. We go on Instagram live and we're cooking delicious recipes, simple recipes. We're keeping it very simple nowadays, knowing that people are at home. So from a residential standpoint, we know that people are cooking and they're really, you know, either they're falling in love more with their gourmet kitchen or they can't stand the kitchen that they have. So 
follow Jackie on her um, on her Instagram and myself along the journey. Tell your friends also what we're doing. But that was really, really, really informative, and I really appreciate uh, you guys being there to help me explain a little bit more on induction. So now we're gonna just bring it to the question and answer page. And I'm sure you guys have been asking questions out there, and hopefully you have. I don't know what's going on on the other side of the camera. But if someone has a couple of questions and they want to raise their hand, now's the time. Maybe Margaret or uh, Jessica or somebody out there can help me um, and or help us answer a few questions. Sure. Does anyone have your questions? Just raise your hand. Um, you can access that through the chat. And if there aren't any questions, because we did an amazing job on induction, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening here in my pot in the meantime. So, if I had a pair of tongs, I will be right back. Hold that simmer there, cameraman. So, at this point in the recipe, guys, my lemons have simmered for more than 20 minutes, which is fine. But I want to remove the, sash the sachet. And I want to squeeze out all of that excess juice that is coming from the sachet that has the lemon zest and the ginger in it. So right now I have an incredibly amazing, really flavorful broth. And then I shut it off and I let it just sit there for a minute. And that's when I incorporate the rest of the ingredients. So to my pot, I'm going to add some honey. I want to make sure this is off and I'm going to turn it off. So as you can see here, these are the indicators. And if you can hone in on some of these indicators that show you where that little black square right there shows you which burner you're using. And today for our camera purposes, I'm backwards. So I usually know exactly what burner is where, but because I'm behind the, the range at a different angle, it's backwards for me, so I'm navigating. So right now I've got my, my lemons, so on and so forth in there. And then what I do is simply remove all the lemons from the broth. And again, guys, this is something that's really delicious as a lemonade. Um, if it's cold, I'm not gonna lie, it makes a really good dark and stormy. If you wanna go there, I can teach you how to make that recipe. But this is something for you, know, for you to really have a pinch of chili flake and then about a half a cup of honey. And I just let that all come to the melt. And then I let all of these delicious flavors come together as one. And then I stir the pot, which as you know, I'm pretty good at. So I'm stirring the pot here. And then I have this amazing, really beautiful, um, fragrant, Medicinal, we know the benefits of ginger are really great for your intestine, really good for your bronchial passageways. It really just opens everything up and it keeps, if you're congested during, if you have allergies, this is a great sipper. I like to say that this is something that if you have um, dinner, it's a little, you know, the, the ginger is a little bit, has a bite and the chili flake has a little bit of spice, but all together, it's very, very nurturing. Let it come to a really nice temperature and sip it after a meal, maybe before bedtime, or even first thing in the morning when you wake up. I love to drink it cold. So that said, uh, if there are no questions, uh, Madame Moderator McSweeney, um, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming into our Viking virtual showcase here on Home Plate. It's been an amazing time. This was our first one, and I think it was felt fantastic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Margaret McSweeney. Oh, thank you so much, Chef Jamie. I'm always inspired by your cooking. And as a thank you, dear guests, we are going to be excited to follow up with your own recipe for this great elixir. So you'll have Jamie's recipe for this elixir along with a video instructional uh, for you. So thank you, J Jamie. And thank you to the presenters today as well, Jackie Rothfong, Maria Gomez Lazarda, and Sue Bailey. We're so glad you have joined the fun and the group.
great information here on the Viking induction training on home plate, a virtual middle D residential experience. Uh, please be on the lookout for future trainings and programmings. We look forward to welcoming you back to home plate, but please stay healthy and safe.